Greetings, Kerbinauts. This is Kerbal Space Program. I'm Bob Fitch, and this is a little example of a deconstructed satellite. We're going to go down into the vehicle assembly building and show how I put this thing together and how you can use robotics. You can see that panel right there, the servo controls. How you can use robotics to make some really cool things where you can open up hinges and extend pistons and rotate objects and do all kinds of really awesome stuff. So let's get down there and take a look at this thing. There's a bunch of stuff I could talk about on this rocket, uh, but I think I'll just jump straight into looking at the satellite itself because I imagine that is the most interesting part of this. So if we zoom in here, you can see I have a very large fairing because the satellite takes up so much internal space on there. Uh, when I put the fairing on, the last part was clipping through, so I had to make it three segments of KW fairing to get that inside there. I noticed when I was testing this that it was kind of jiggling around and I could see the sides sort of bouncing out of the fairing and then going back in again. So I decided to put some decouplers on here and uh, keep the ends on there and uh, not decouplers, some struts. Uh, well, yeah, decouplers too. So I got the decouplers with the struts attached to them. And then down here, this decoupler uh, has these struts connected down into the fuel tank there. So it holds those sides in and doesn't let them flop around during the launch. When we actually get into orbit, the last thing I do is I blow those decouplers. They just gently float away because those are the blue kind. And then when this opens up, it just covers that over. Uh, but the real interesting stuff is right here. This is a uh, Infernal Robotics or Magic Smoke Industries hinge. And over when you have that installed, you're going to get this little window over here where all of your controls are going to show up. Uh, so as soon as you put one of these on, you're going to get this over in a window. Uh, I can grab one of those over in here and just give you an example. So it's under the tab here. One thing that's not on this satellite is this powered closed hinge, but I have used them sometime. So since I'm going to show the other ones, I'll show this one as part of this example. So if I put that on right there, then that hinge, uh, get a good angle there. Uh, that hinge allows it to connect on that side, obviously, into here. And this side, I can connect something to it. And then when I use the control for it, the hinge will open up just like you'd expect, like a door. Uh, it has added a little entry over here at the bottom of the bottommost group. If I wanted to make sure that I wanted to control that independently of everything else, I would have to do a new group. And then I suggest you rename your groups immediately. I'm not going to keep this, so I'm not going to actually rename it right now. But I suggest you rename them immediately and put your servos into the groups immediately and reno rename those as well because as soon as you start adding a bunch of servos, it becomes really hard to figure out uh, which one was which if you start adding them and then you go back and you look and you go, oh, geez, all these things say hinge. I don't know which one is which. So yeah, just get that, get those named right away. I'm going to delete that though. I will leave the group in there once it's been created. And if you load multiple rockets, the groups keep stacking up even though they're empty. But you can remove them with that button there. So if we zoom out a little here, you can see that I've got just some regular communitron type dishes on there. And if we take one of these by the hinge, I have three doors that are exactly the same on uh, the one side there that open up on the top and then three doors the same one just rotated to be able to f attach down at the bottom and I flipped that and put three of them down there I did three times symmetry on the two sides so that gives me my doors uh, and I'll show you those of course when we're out in orbit and I'm going to just delete that because I'm deconstructing this satellite until we don't have anything left of it so you can see exactly what went into making it Okay, so we got those which will be covered up. We got the doors down here with these hinges. I had to put them on those struts because it was uh, too close and things were clipping, like these solar panels were clipping through the doors until I put that on and extended it out a little bit away. I have the RCS on here because the RCS allows me with the mono, uh, or the mono propellant on here because these RCS engines allow me to fine tune the orbit and get the exact orbital period that I want. In here you can see that we have these RCS engines, but they are attached to pistons. You can see pistons right here as well. It's a three segment piston. Uh, so that other hinge I was talking about is right here. You just grab one and you put it on the rocket. But the pistons are a little more complicated. So I'm going to use this one half size. Uh, the ones that are in here are the one quarter size. But the one half size here, notice that it says piston one half segment B. This one says segment C. 
and that one is the one quarter segment A. We don't want that one. So I'm going to get a C, and I'm going to have to find an A. And here's a B. Notice that they can get progressively larger. The next one's on my next tab, maybe. Yeah, one half segment A, and that'll be the biggest one. So you put the biggest one on wherever you're going to want the piston uh, pushing away from, and then you take the next one and you just simply stack it right on top, and then the next one and you stack it right on top of that. And once you have them all lined up, uh, there we go. Then you can put something on it, like you can even put another hinge right on top of that, and now that piston will push out the hinge. And if I were to attach another thing to it, Heck, I'll even put a rototron. Ah, oh, that's a gigantic rototron. Let's move back here and find a smaller rototron. So there, a one quarter size rototron. If I put that on top there, then I could put something like, say, this strut on it. And I'm going to turn it into an arm just to give you an example of how versatile all this stuff is. So I'll put that on there and I'll put another one. Okay, so we have a bunch of stuff and all of it's going to be this new stuff down here. We have the pistons, which I'm going to put in one group. So sample piston. And let's get all of that stuff in the one group. Piston, piston, piston. And then add another group with sample rototron. We'll put that in there. And one more group. Uh, sample Oh, the sides are gone. I'll just let it be this one. Sample hinge. Okay, so we'll remove that group. So I'll have three things in here, and I can show you uh, what they do. I think you can probably guess, but let's take a look outside. It's kind of cool. So as you can see, it added those three groups to my control interface for all that stuff right here. So if I wanted to extend that piston out, we just do that. Oh, it looks like I got it crooked. Well, it's just a demo. So you push that and it pushes out the pistons. Uh, you can get them angled in funky directions too if you want to have something that actually does that kind of extension. I intended to get it lined up and I didn't, but oh well. Uh, let's see here. We added the sample hinge so you can see that that moves up and down. If you press the zero that neutralizes it so the piston will go back to its original starting position and then the arrows just move it in and out. In this case, the zero and the right are gonna be the same thing because the piston started all the way into the right. And then the rototron, just as you would expect, it just goes around in circles one way or the other. Same thing for here, the zero would get it to go back to its original starting position. On rototrons, that can actually be helpful. Well, let's go back inside and finish showing what's inside the satellite. All right, here we are again. We don't need any of that stuff anymore. And if we look down in here, you can see now that it makes more sense that I have the pistons with a hinge attached to the solar panels. So the three solar panels can be extended out away from the body and I can rotate them up and down to get more uh, visibility with the sun and get as much power as possible. Because this thing has, uh, you saw at the beginning, uh, six arms and a seventh dish up here. Each arm has a communitron, so it uses a fair bit of power. Those solar panels are pretty gigantic though, so see that was the piston that was helping with the RCS. If the RCS is on an arm like that, it creates more torque, so uh, by extending them out I get two things at the same time. One is I get the torque, which is actually a cool gameplay effect of having them out on the arm like that. And the second benefit is uh, I can throw my arms around a little and wave and say, oh, this is uh, protecting the internals. This is a role-playing reason. You know, I don't want the, the RCS engines to damage my internal workings of this thing. Obviously, it doesn't really do that, but uh, I'm pretending it does. The last thing I have on here that I haven't shown that's uh, this robotic stuff are these arms here. It's just another hinge, and I put the... Uh, antenna on that side. Where's the other one? Uh, it's right there. So uh, let's get these out of the way. So you can see the extra hinge right there. It's just an antenna on a hinge here and a hinge here, which makes it rotate. They're both in the same group, so it makes it rotate both this side and this side at the same time, which has a cool effect of keeping the angles the same in between them as it opens. And lastly, all I did with the batteries was I uh, grabbed one and I put it on with symmetry 
six symmetry and then I started pressing Q rotating it around so normally they would look like this when they're stuck on the side but if you hit Q it'll rotate once and sort of sink into the satellite just a tiny bit I don't mind doing that because there's so much open space in there I can argue that that open space is being used for it normally I wouldn't want to clip stuff into it you know like this right here if you do this now they're clipped inside and that just feels a little like cheating to me so I don't do that uh, but yeah, there's a bunch of batteries on here so it can go through the dark side without going offline and that's it so it's just some regular trusses in there I have a little mech jib so I can get some instrumentation uh, down here it's your basic rocket where I have some thrusters to throw the side boosters off and not let them collide with anything I got some surface lights in there I got some retro rockets right here to make uh, this segment uh, thrust away from the satellite once it finally decouples uh, regular a lot of my stuff tends to be uh, with the KW rocketry and that's what these boosters and the fuel tank and the engines all are they're all KW rocketry one question I get asked a lot is what mods were in that so I have one mod called simple part filter which will allow me uh, to select the sorting that I want as well as show me all the different mods I have so if you look in here, you can see some of the things that went into making this are little bits and pieces, probably from at least half of what you see on this list right here. So now I think it's time to have some fun and launch this and show it in action as it actually opens up. Oh, one last thing. Uh, it might be worth noting what Delta V I'm using on here and... I'm targeting a 250 kilometer altitude. You'll notice that this is way lower than stock. That's because I run with ferrum aerospace and deadly reentry as well. So you need less delta V to actually get through the atmosphere with that. Okay, so without further ado, let's take this out and play with it, give it a launch. Okay, we're almost there. I'm 200 kilometers up. That lower stage has done its duty. I want to let it re-enter, and it is definitely re-entering, so it'll keep space garbage out of the way. Uh, we'll decouple that, and the retros take it away, get it away from me. So now the last thing we'll do is I'm going to power up a little bit to make sure that those uh, decouplers have a little extra velocity to them and there we go so those will get out of my way when I'm ready to actually open it up I'm gonna use mechjeb here to tell me how to circularize once I get to the right altitude so I'm gonna make sure that I'm pointing where I want to go uh, I have some hotkeys set up to access things like the antenna on the inside. Uh, remember the antenna here is down on this arm right there. I normally have a hotkey, but I'll just do that to activate it. The reason is I'm using Remote Tech 2. You can see I've got my little flight computer thing here. Uh, I'm using Remote Tech 2. Oh, this is the installation that doesn't actually have the flight computer. Well, that's okay. And with that, you need to keep it in command or relative to the mission control that is. And so I needed to make sure that I have that antenna extended. So you remember we have our sides, so they're hooked up to the hinges. I hit this and those sides then open up based on the direction that I have those hinges angled. I hit my hotkey to cause the communitrons to open up and like I said, this is remote tech, so I have all these because I want to be able to point to all kinds of different things and have the dishes pointing directly at the other dishes. So the solar arms, we hit this and that causes the pistons to extend out. They are, the solar is the one that's on the hinges, so it allows me to angle them to get the most sun, like I said. Uh, I have a hotkey set up to make those extend as well in the action groups. The RCS, remember, is trying to 
uh, extend out as well to give me the extra torque and to keep it away from the controls inside and the, the you know, batteries don't want the damn band damn I don't want the batteries to get damaged right of course and then we have our antenna which you can see now what I was talking about because it angles both at the same time it keeps the antenna basically parallel to the rocket and I think has a kind of cool effect to just kind of hang out like there uh, this one is also on an arm just because I wanted to, not because it has any effect. Actually, extending them doesn't have any effect in either case, but it made sense to me for role-playing reasons to say that they were on these arms to get them out away from things and prevent interference or whatever. And it looks cool. So there we have it. We have our deployed satellite. And how I got that from all of those servos in... Magic Smoke Industries Infernal Robotics. Good luck building your satellites, Kerbinauts. I will see you later.